My mother started teaching me violin at the age of three. My dad thought it would be fun to teach me to read musical notation. But then the teacher introduced this instrument called the viola. And I had never heard of the word viola in my life, but the sound of it was such a magical one, viola. And he came back with a little quarter-sized cello and a little bow, and he sat me down and he showed me how to hold the instrument and he showed me how to hold the bow and he even had me bow some open strings there just right on the spot. I wanted to be the first person to play the violin in space. And I remember I got back that report from my teacher, uh, Miss Keyports, and she had scribbled right next to where I had written my, my life goal, you can do anything you can, Matt, you shoot for the stars. Every single day, I don't think I remember taking a day off, even if it was the holidays. <laughs> Something inside of me must have loved doing it so much that I just kept with it, and it became obviously more of a, of a hobby and a way to get out of uh, physical education class. <laughs> I remember going through a list of names for the organization as it was emerging and the name Apollo just keep, keep, kept popping in my head. Matt started to do some folk arrangements that he would throw into these concerts and they ended up being sort of um, maybe interpretive bridges to the standard repertoire that we were playing. So I had, I had this idea that we should commission a new piece for every single concert in the next season. Why not make it even a little bit broader and say let's do 20 works by the end of the decade? I would like to see Apollo continue as an organization in, in that respect because I think that it could lead us to many different places and of course there is a, a whole a musical universe out there to explore. <laughs>